Hello, my name is Anthony Apostolidis, and this year I was honored to be the chairperson of the Oratorical Festival Committee here at St. George. I would like to invite you to join me as we celebrate in the talents and creativity of our youth. The Oratorical Festival was a slightly different process this year in response to the COVID-19 crisis, yet I'm immensely grateful to see the amount of support that our parents and youth showed for our festival's mission, which is to celebrate our youth and witness to our faith. Some of you might remember a couple of months ago, we hosted the junior senior level via a live Zoom event. Equally important to us was our elementary level participants who every year have joined our juniors and seniors in presenting their own poetry, essays, speeches, and iconography. This year was no different, at least in that respect. And so I would like to thank our 12 participants who are representing grades three through six. I am proud of all of you. You worked hard to write, draw, and speak on a topic that was close to your hearts. And I know I was impressed with the creativity, depth of thought, and excellent understanding of our faith. While the elementary division is not graded, I would consider each one of you as a winner for the accomplishment that you achieved. So join me as we celebrate together the final stage of the 2020 St. John Chrysostom Oratorical Festival. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alexander, and I would like to talk about a miracle that happened in my family years ago. When my grandmother married my grandfather, she knew that she would have to name her first boy after my great-grandfather, Meletis. She was not familiar with that name, and she did not like it. She was constantly asking friends and family members what nickname she could call her son other than Meletis. She would come up with ideas like Mel or Meli. When my mom was about four years old, she liked playing with her younger brother in my grandparents' room. One day, Uncle Meletis wanted to climb the television set table. When my grandparents had a big colored television, you old folks may remember those gigantic televisions. The table was not stable and the big fat television set fell all over my poor uncle. His whole body was under the box and only his head and his feet were not. When my grandmother heard 
the noise of the television falling, she ran to the room that the noise came from. As soon as she entered the room, she saw her toddler son, my uncle, underneath the television with his eyes closed, not breathing, not breathing and not moving. She started crying. When she lifted the television box, miraculously, my uncle opened his eyes and he jumped up in the air like nothing had happened. My grandmother cried from joy and was thanking the Lord for this miracle. Her first thought was to check the calendar and to find out what what saint was celebrated on that day? It was February 12, 1977. It was a feast day of St. Meletios, the Archbishop of Antioch, the patron saint of her father-in-law and her son. Since then, my grandmother venerated St. Meletios and always talked about him to everyone. She never called my uncle another name ever again. St. Meletios was a great theologian that fought against the heresy of Arius during the Second Ecumenical Council. May he in always intercede to Christ our God and Savior to illumine the eyes of our souls. Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Efremia. One of the greatest teachings that Christ, the Son of God, taught to his disciples was to love one another and forgive one another. Also, Christ has told each to never lie to others, for it is wrong because it is like lying to God. Love can be more than just a feeling, it can be a link between one and another. Love can bring people together and love is meant to lead people to peace. That is why God sent us Christ to earth, to let, to lead people to peace. And to do that, he always told them to love each other. As said in John verse three sixteen, he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This me means that God loved each one, each of us so much that he sent his son to us so we can all become worthy of having eternal life in his paradise. Love can save people. When you love God, loves because as it says in the Bible in Matthew verse 5 through 6, 40, verse 44 and 45, but I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who perse persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Forgiveness can save you. If you forgive God, he will always, and I mean always, forgive you back. He will always forgive your sins, just like Jesus said when he said for on earth. But instead, some thought that only God and people sent for God can forgive people's sins. That is why he was crucified on the cross. But you can still ask for forgiveness because this, that is what Jesus and God is also seeking for in his he heavenly kingdom. All who ask for forgiveness will treasure the gift of eternal life. As said in the Bible, Matthew verses 6, 14, For if you forgive 
other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Because as Jesus said, the way you treat others is like treating God. Because as Jesus replied to his disciples, he stated that if that those who see me naked and clothe me, those who see me hungry and feed me, those who see me as a stranger and invite me to their home, those who see me as a prisoner and feed me, those who see me sick and come to help me, will have eternal life. But then his disciples answered, But when did we see you sick and help you? When were you a prisoner and we clothed you? Then, then Jesus replied, If you help others in those ways, you will be helping me, and you will be invited to into me and my Father's heavenly kingdom. Truth is like God trusting you, for if you don't say the truth and you lie to someone, it will be like lying to God. For in the Bible, in John verse 8, 32 and 32, it states, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus also stated in John verse 14, 6, he, state, he said, I am the way of, of, and the truth of life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Forgiveness, love, and truth are all very important teachings of God. That is why in order to have eternal life in God's heavenly kingdom, you must follow Jesus at, just as his disciples, not in person, but from the heart. And just as Jesus said, you must love one another just as you love yourself. You must ask God for forgiveness, and you must never lie. Always speak the truth, just as Jesus did when he was on earth. But always remember, even if you cannot see Jesus, remember that he can always see you. Thank you. My name is Crystal. I'm going to be talking to you about St. Francis the Gardener. St. Francis the Gardener lived in the great city of Constantinople. He came to Constantinople from his birthplace in Epirus in search of work. Eventually, he got hired by a wealthy Ottoman Turk to look after an old and overgrown garden. Crystal worked hard and with love, and in very little time, he turned the old garden into a blooming paradise. The trees were blossoming and beginning to bear fruit. 
There were happy birds singing, and the bees of the area would come to the garden. One day, Christos was selling his master's apples in the big agora of Constantinople. A Turk came up to him. He liked the glossy red apples on Christos' display. He thought he could buy them all and resell them for a much higher price. For all the apples, he asked for a very low price, practically nothing. Christos refused because he could not give away all the apples for such little money. The Turk got mad and shouted and promised that he would take revenge on poor Christos. The Turk did what he vowed and went directly to the Ottoman authorities. There he falsely testified that Christos vowed to become a Turk and become Muslim and now was refusing to do so. The judge restrained Christos and asked him, Did you really do this, you faithless Kafir? Christos responded calmly, No, I am a faithful Christian and I will never betray Christ the Son of God. Never, ever. The judge did not like the answer. He ordered that Christos be punished by striking him with sticks and bats. Christos was tied up and thrown inside the dungeon. It so happened that a renowned scholar monk, Galerius the Pontiff, was in Constantinople at the time. He went as Christos' arrest and visited him in his dark and cell. Wanting to help him at least a bit, he offered the poor prisoner some food. However, Christos said, why should I eat? I am not going to live anyways. Let me die for my Christ." Hungry and thirsty, enjoying him, having him sooner than later. He then asked the scholar to, to arrange a divine liturgy for the repose of his soul. At dusk that very day, the execution took place just outside the city, the glorious city of Constantinople. Christos confessed his faith in a true tried God and left for the triumphant church. King Christos the gardener was killed for his faith on February 12th in 1748. Through his intercessions, may you all go stronger in our faith to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Following in God's footsteps, Christos Anesti, good afternoon. My name is Tess, and on this blessed day, I will be speaking to you about my faith, a very common topic that is always taught but rarely followed. As my title says, following in God's footsteps, imagine what the world would be if we all followed God. What would happen? Well, let me give you the numbers of our world now. Last year, nearly 800,000 people died on this earth due to suicide. That is in one year. In the year of 2019 alone, there were 417 mass shootings in the U.S., some at houses of worship. Approximately 1.4 million people were part of gangs. 9 billion tons of trash gets litter per year. That is how flawed our earth is right now. People killing themselves and each other for no reason, littering and taking drugs instead of going to church. Let me review the Ten Commandments. Number one, there is only one God. Number two, do not idolize or worship. Number three, do not use the Lord's name in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, do not kill. Number seven, do not commit adultery. Number eight, do not steal. Number nine, do not give false evidence against your neighbor. And number 10, do not be envious of your neighbor's goods. Imagine if everyone followed the Ten Commandments, believed in and followed God, even if we still remain in our religion, but just followed the Ten Commandments. Our world would be far from perfect because God doesn't expect us to be perfect. We would still hold our flaws, but we wouldn't live in fear of our own kind. Imagine trusting your child so much that you wouldn't have to track their every step or be paranoid of these crazy sins we have on this earth. We would feel a sense of relief, and we wouldn't have to even think of war. Just a few Sundays ago, we talked about being the goat or the sheep. In other words, are you a sheep, meaning do you follow God, or are you a goat, an ignorant human who doesn't care about your well-being or others? So go home today and read the Ten Commandments and think. Am I following in God's footsteps? Thank you. Hi, today I'm gonna to talk about the Last Supper. I chose to talk about this icon because I always wonder what is happening in it. When I look at many different icons, this one stands out to me. This icon shows Jesus at the table with his 12 disciples. It is the last meal that Jesus had before his crucifixion. This moment is very sad because Jesus knows that it is the last meal before the suffering that he will go through. At the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and said to the disciples, Take, this is my body. He then drank wine and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. 
From this moment, we have Holy Communion, one of the most important parts of our divine liturgy. Jesus also predicted at the Last Supper that Jews would betray him. When the disciples were eating the Last Supper with Jesus, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me when he was eating with me. Jesus said, It is one of the twelve when he was dipping bread into the dish with me. As you can see, one of the disciples is dipping bread into the dish in the middle of the table. This is Judas. After the Last Supper came the moment of Judas' betrayal. Judas gave the crown a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him a land or guard. Judas went up to Jesus and said, Master, and he kissed him. Then the guards took him to the cross to crucify him. Once I learned that this is a story behind the Last Supper, I realized how important this icon is. Thank you. My name is Andreana, and today I would like to share my thoughts and what I've learned about angels. I always wondered what angels really were, who made them, and why people would sometimes call me one. I became curious that I began reading about them and asking questions about them. First, I learned that the word angel means messenger and that this word shows the nature of angelic service to people. The angels were some of the first beings God created and possibly came upon us before God created the world. But I also know that there are different types of angels. There are the messenger angels, the guardian angels, the angel saints, and spiritual angels. But what are they? Angels are spirits that are very smart and strong-willed. They serve God to carry out his will and glorify him. Angels have no body and are visible to us. They don't need to eat, drink, or wear clothing like us. Also, they don't marry and have no worries about the future and no fear of death because they always stay young, strong, and beautiful. Angels cannot make miracles without the God's will. They are the symbols of they are the symbol of kindness and holiness. They are the voice within us telling us always to do the right thing. So how many angels exist in heaven and what is exactly do they do? Do apparently there are too many to count and impossible to keep track of. Their job in heaven is to worship God every second of every minute of every day and, and night. I believe angels sing holy hymns in heaven to lead all of us in our, in our worship to the Lord Jesus Christ. They send the message of God's glor glory and do God's amazing work. But wait, what about angels who are here are on earth around us? These angels are the messengers who are sent by God to help us when we really when we really need them i believe they are our guardian angels who are here to protect us from evil because we are god's believers the proof that angels exist in our bible we all know of the angels gabriel who came down and told our virgin mary the theotokos of the birth of jesus christ in the birth in the birth of Jesus, there were angels that announced the good news to the shepherds and also the, one, the ones that intervened and prevented the, the Magi from returning to Herod. It was angels who told the myrrh-bearing woman and the apostles about Christ, Christ's resurrection. Angels helped the apostles. Angels help so many of our saints at the time of need. There are angels that help us every single day of our lives. We as a Greek ortho we as Greek Orthodox Christians love angels and that that is why we sing for them and acknowledge their presence. One of my favorite hymns in choir is the Cherubic Hymn is known as the Song of the Angels. Every Sunday, 
Sunday at church, in the creed we say, I believe in one God, marker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, meaning that not only do we believe in God, but we also believe in his in his creation creations, including those which are invisible, such as the angels. Our, our church believes that each person has a guardian angel. So I strongly believe I have mine who is always with me to protect me from evil. I also believe our guardian angels are with us from the moment we are born. Always follow us as soon as we are babies. I think that this is why babies smile at the divine liturgy, at the time of the divine liturgy. Saint Paisios seems to agree with me. He said that babies are smiling because they are in constant contact with God and they have nothing to worry about. What did Christ say about little children? That their angels in heaven continually gaze up upon the face of my Father who is in heaven. They're in touch with God and with the guardian angel who's with, the, who's with them all the time. They smile in their sleep sometimes. Sometimes they also see their guardian angels and play with them and play with them. The angels stroke them, tease them, shake their fists, and they laugh. I know that whenever I'm afraid, sad, or desperate in need of help, that my guardian angel will always find a way to help me as long as I have God in my prayers and in my heart. So as I thought about my guardian angel, I imagined what he or she would look like. So I drew a picture of my guardian angel, just as I saw in my prayers. Angels represent the goodness that we, we as people should try to be. As good Greek Orthodox Christians, as strong believers, we are closer to God so that one day we may also become angels. Also, at this time, we need our guardian angels beside us. We will pray every day to this virus to end. Thank you, everybody. Forgiveness is to stop feeling angry towards someone that did something bad towards you. Forgiveness is a thought-out decision to let go feelings of hurt toward a person or a group who has harmed or upset you. Forgiveness is letting go of pain. Forgiveness is happiness. Forgiveness is a path of feelings that might never leave, but will bring you peace. Forgiveness is a gift from God to build trust and friendship. Forgiveness is a given strength that everyone has but might not use all the time. If you have forgiveness, you most certainly have a superpower. I forgive you. Do you forgive me?